what we do here is go back, 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 back. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh, that's right. Your screen saver's on. I thought the screen was dead. Good evening. It is Saturday, the eighth of August, eighth for the eighth. Awesome. Uh, twenty twenty. It is Saturday, and it is very, very warm. I don't know where you are in the world, but here in the United Kingdom, it is currently very, very warm, and I'm getting bitten by all kinds of manner of midges, insects, flies, bees, wasps, all those things that come out when it gets a bit hot and a little bit sticky. So uh, yeah, hopefully you are all doing well. I am kind of playing with a new setup at the moment, so you can't really see it, but just slightly out of shot there, I've got a monitor on the wall now, so I can monitor the stream, see what's going on, so hopefully I can see if everything's in focus and everything's looking relatively okay. Um, yeah, so if you see me looking over here, it's not that I've kind of spaced out and forgotten that you're all there. It's just the fact that I'm checking to see what's going on in the stream. And actually, I can see it there. So yeah, oh, actually, there's a, there is a massive lag. And luckily, I don't look quite as sunburn on the stream as I do in real life. So yeah, pretty sunburn. It's been pretty warm today. And yeah, I've got the ceiling fan on. If it's annoying for you, let me know and I'll turn it off and I'll try not to melt under these circumstances, but it is like, 25, 26 degrees in the house at the moment. We don't have AC here in uh, the UK. We have fans which push around relatively warm air. And the temperature, well, it would be showing on my little ditto, but unfortunately I've set it to the Mike's unboxing scroller, which hopefully some of you have seen the video for that little ditto. Such a cool little product, really happy with that. Uh, yeah, so before we get into it tonight, obviously we're gonna be discussing a B550 build. Yeah, I know, B550, the one they told us not to mention. Finally, I've uh, succumbed and decided that time has hit us and it's about the right time to buy. Prices have started dropping, not quite as much as I'd hoped and from last week's stream, for those of you that were with us last week. Hopefully, what are you doing? Oh, I see Dave's what you're doing now. Eh? Dave's moaning, sorry. There we go. We're repping the pens. There you go. Mike's Unboxing Pens. Get yours at the links below. Patreon.com forward slash Mike's Unboxing. Anyway, moving on. So, B550 motherboards. Now, to update you on last week's video, we did the video and I was talking about the Tomahawk board, which I got from Alza, which unfortunately, um, I thought I got in there pretty quickly, but it seems it wasn't quick enough or they just simply can't get the stock. The order was actually postponed until the 28th of this month, which for me personally is a little bit too long to wait. And also in that meantime, you know, prices are potentially gonna drop. So I took a refund on that one. So that one has been canceled. So you won't be seeing a review on that here anytime soon. But I thought, well, I still wanna do something around the B550. I need to do it in a way that actually makes sense. There's no point in buying a B550 board to use a Right, 2600 or a slightly older processor, it doesn't make sense and potentially it won't work, which is something we are gonna be trying out. Because I'm pretty convinced that older, older APUs and CPUs will work on the B550. And I'm hoping and praying that it won't destroy the board. So I'll be doing the unboxing and the review of this one. This is the ASRock Phantom Gaming 4 B550 chipset. This at the moment is absolute steel in my opinion. In the UK, picked us up for about 105 pounds, I think it was, thereabouts which coupled with this, the Ryzen 3 3100, which is pretty much all you can buy at the moment here in the UK, for 200 pounds, like 95 pounds and 105 pounds, for 200 pounds for that, I think that is an awesome combination. With this processor, we've got roughly kind of Intel 6700K performance, possibly a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the application, but certainly in games, this is a pretty awesome and quite a potent combination for 200 pounds. I don't know if you agree. If you do, let me know in the comments. If you don't, or if you do, whatever. Sorry, Kath, what was that? Karen. 
Aperson said it's 125 now. Uh, it's 125 if you go for, if you go onto Amazon, where I've got the links for this in the video description, the first link that it takes you to on Amazon for some reason comes up at 125. If you look below it, there's another one which is basically the same description for 105 or 106 pounds. Have a look, it's, it's definitely on there somewhere. Check it out. It's, I think, for 100 pounds or give or take, this is actually a really decent board. It's limited on features. Let's not uh, beat around the bush on that one. It is limited, the IO is limited, there's not a lot going on on the motherboard, but essentially this is, in my opinion, the replacement for the Pro 4, the B450 Pro 4, which for most of us, and especially for those of us in the Discord, that is the board, our go-to board. When people are building a budget or moderate system, the ASRock B450 Pro 4 is generally the go-to board. Nice BIOS, relatively good features, pretty reliable, not a bad board overall, and best of all, doesn't cost a lot. But it's about £80, so paying an extra £20 or pounds for this particular board, I think makes a lot of sense now in 2020. Some streaming issues going on. Oh, Calf says there's streaming issues. Who said that? Sky and Angry Doge. But mine looks alright. Uh, Sky looks alright. Let's have a look. Uh, sorry, I was going to my settings. Uh, I'm not sure if I can actually change. Oh, it's all good, oh, it's all good is it? Okay. Pa panic over. Don't <laughs> panic, Mr. Mannering. As you were. Actually, I just noticed. What do you think of the uh, the case? The case behind me. That is the Sharkoon TG5 Pro in its addressable RGB glory. And yeah, I haven't done the uh, the update on that. I did a quick review and unboxing of that a little bit earlier in the week. And actually, I was bit skeptical on how good it would be made some modifications to it and well as you can see the fans are sticking back now further than what they were they were in the front uh, but yeah it actually seems to be a fantastic little case but anyway I'll do an update on that later on in this week so where was I oh yeah so the Phantom Gaming Board this definitely is an upgrade over the Pro 4 so if you're looking at building a system at the moment based around AMD chips be it a or anything I would say up to probably a Ryzen 7 3700, maybe a 3800. The 3900s, it's a slightly different ball game, and really, if you're spending that sort of money on a processor, realistically, you don't want to be slumming it down here with us in the cheap seats and getting yourself one of these. You want to spend a bit more money a board with a bit more of a feature set. And really, I suppose you'd be going X570 rather than B550 because this is a cheap board. Effectively, <coughs> effectively it is a cheap board in comparison with what else is available on the market. And also for compatibility's sake with some of the new Ryzen 3 processors, PCI Express 4, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I've put my money where my mouth is. So I've bought this board, uh, bought this chip as well. I've got to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to perform. It's only got four cores, eight threads, but it's uh, 3.9 gigahertz and, well, boost speed's 3.9. Normal clock speeds, 3.6 gigahertz across all four cores. So it's not really a speed demon, but it should be pretty decent. And again, most games now generally tend to favor the GPU rather than the CPU. The CPU is basically just dragging along behind. And well, unless you're running CSGO or some of those types of things, but for most games, the CPU barely breaks a sweat. It's the graphics card which does the job. And in this, we're going for, going for a pretty decent CPU. The overall build, based around this uh, motherboard and processor, which is only £200 of it, the entire build is going to cost us £700 here in the UK. I just rejigged it a little bit just before we started the uh, stream, and we've got it just underneath that £700 mark. So, motherboard and processor at £200, yeah, the rest of the bits are getting expensive. Memory's coming down in price, but everything else seems to be going up in price. Solid state storage is starting to drop a little bit but power supplies is pretty much where we're all getting killed on at the moment power supplies are getting very expensive also particularly for this build i have decided to go for a slightly more decent case rather than slumming it down in the cheap seats again with something like the kz08 kz10 um, the d4 those kinds of cases gone for something with a little bit of longevity and also fantastic airflow but we'll go into that a little bit further into the video and I suppose I really should say hello to those of you that are in the chat. 
those of you that are actually here with us and not gone over to the uh, the dark side. So we've got Dave Burns who was in first. Evening to you, Dave. Dave did a fantastic stream the other night on uh, last night. Twitch. Mm -hmm. Last night, technically this morning, so I think it went over into midnight, but fantastic stream. So check out Dave's profile and check out his, stri his uh, Twitch. And it may, is there one tonight? There might be one tonight after this as well. Uh, Clay Tech Kev's in the house as well. Angry Doge. Who else have we got? Ghost Adder says hello. Was playing Fallout 3. Sky Stalker is joining us all the way from across the pond. Paul Bakewell is also in and probably sweating as am I. <laughs> uh, Henry's Makes Skins says hi. Who else have we got? Uh, Matthew Day, pizza on the go, as usual. Nice one, Matthew. As always, getting in there with the food ready for the stream. Aletta's in the house, well. she says hello, people. Hi, Aletta. Hopefully, it's uh, not too baking over there. I know. I no, can't remember where it is, but somewhere around in America. Trooper C says, hi, calf. Hey, what about me, Trooper? <laughs> okay. Uh, Trooper C says, I've had my fan on me all day and covered in sunburn. The live is what I've looked forward to the most. Oh, bless you. This live or another live. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Henry says, who is watching this at night too? Uh, yep, yeah, most of us, I think. It's nine o'clock here. And, well, gone nine o'clock. You're not technically watching it. You can, I'm not watching it. I'm just hosting it. Or I suppose you are, yeah. I'm just the balls dragging along behind. Uh... Click Tech Kev says, hi Mike, can you wish Claire a happy 44th birthday? There you go, Claire, happy 44th birthday. I hope you're having a good one. And hopefully you're not chasing wasps around in the middle of the night. Paul Bakewell says, 29 degrees C down to 24 now in Leicestershire. Yeah, I'm not sure what the temperature is here now. Is he but... still locked down then? Yeah, that's, that's Leicester, not Leicestershire. Is that? I think that's a different thing. Away? I'm not sure. I don't know. Geography was never my strong point. As was building PCs. Captain Meese Adventures says, How do unboxers? Evening all. Clinton Davis says, Hi, Tanderman says, Hello, everybody. Nigel Thomas, evening all. Uh, Ruth Wick says, Hi, Kath. Nee Rasher says, Good evening. Palu says, My front room is 29C. That is pretty warm. DK Durham says K, which normally means uh, F off, but we'll take it as being a greeting rather than a uh, dismissal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mucklis says surprise stream. No, nope. it's every Saturday, nine o'clock, unless you're a time traveler. Lester says it's 22 degrees C in my bedroom. Last night, seriously, oh man. Sorry to get off topic, but last night it was so, so hot in bed. I think it must have been like two, three o'clock before I actually managed to just pass out from either heat stroke or just complete tiredness. It was horrendous. Sweating. Oh, horrendous. Don't like it. Sky Stalker says, holy, 105 quid for a B550 board is awesome. It is. It is pretty good. I think it was 105. I might have paid 108 or 109. I'm not too sure. But I'm sure I've seen it for 105 as well when I was looking through quickly. So, yeah. Do... Uh, do give me a little bit of leeway there, a couple of pounds either way. You never know, you might even pick up a little bit cheaper. Obviously as well, I should say, caveat, that was via Amazon, so you will need Amazon Prime to get that kind of deal. Although I think I've seen it for uh, around about the same price from eBuyer in the UK and also scan.co.uk. So if Amazon isn't your thing and you don't have Prime, etc., why have you not? Why have you not got Prime? Get Prime. And if you do get Prime, use our links in the video description and... Uh, We'll be very, very thankful for that. But yeah, get Primus. Uh, it does make it does make sense, especially if you're buying a lot of tech gear and also deliveries as well. A lot of places now are really jumping up the charges for delivery. Alza, the place I was going to get the motherboard from before, like £15 for a DHL delivery, which I kind of understand because DHL isn't the cheapest, but really £15 to deliver a motherboard in 2020 does seem to be rather extraordinary. Um, I think even as an individual, if I went to the local post office, I could probably send one for what, seven or eight pounds, calf? Is that 
seven or eight pounds fully insured. Send it. So as a company, surely they must be making some discount agree agreement uh, agreements with DHL. They should be getting cheaper than that. So I think that is a little bit uh, over the top. Okay. Uh, where are we? Okay, I'm getting off track. So. Aussie boy says hi. Six a.m. Sunday and cold. Oh, if only. Mr. I know I have. Dave Burns says thanks for the shout out, Mike. You're very welcome. And Dave, like most of us who do this kind of stuff, uh, it's hard work. You may think that it's just some douchebag behind a camera, but unfortunately, you still have to learn things. You have to research things, and you have to have the uh, the kahunas to actually turn on the camera, turn on the stream and get things done and it it is daunting at times and every now and then you get that kind of oh god i don't want to do this generally i get that most saturday evenings it's like oh god it's getting towards nine o'clock i want to be going to bed i don't want to be starting a stream but you just got to push yourself and keep on going you even did your back in to try and I even, yeah i even did my back in today on purpose to try and get out of doing a stream and it failed miserably <laughs> so actually if you do see me kind of wincing a bit it's because my back is done a little bit but that's why i'm sitting in this chair not in the gaming chair because oh, yeah. The gaming chair takes a little bit of getting out of, whereas this I can just fall out of. It's all right. Oh. <laughs> fall off of, yeah. Uh, Karen Anderson actually brings up a good question there. I wonder if the B550 still legend will be as, gr as great as the B450 is. I think the entire product stack has shifted. So what was the, pro well, the Pro 4 and also the still legend were essentially the very same board very slight tweaks a little bit more rgb on the plastic shrouds etc whereas now the still legend on the b550 seems to have taken up a notch got slightly better vrms a little bit extra bling to it. it looks a little bit more jazzy but there is that price increase as well <laughs> so i think the phantom gaming is kind of where the pro 4 was the next one up from the Phantom Gaming 4 is the Pro 4, which now is kind of in the shoes of where the previous Steel Legend is. And then the Steel Legend then kind of fills a weird gap in between where the Steel Legend and maybe the Extreme was. It's a very, very weird product stack. And there is, I don't know if you guys noticed, there are tons of B550 boards, like literally loads of them. And they all seem to be micro ATX. There seems to be an absolute glut of micro ATX boards on the market. Now, I don't have a what I would consider a suitable micro ATX case, which is why I'm kind of been limited to ATX boards. If I went for this, the, the uh, Phantom Gaming on the micro ATX side of things, I could have shaved off another 20, 30 pounds off the price of this, which actually does make a big difference. And that could be the difference between going from a Ryzen 3 3100 and then maybe if you're lucky, with a few other tweaks elsewhere, you could go to a Ryzen 5 3600, which would be a massive jump in performance and compute power. But at the moment, the Ryzen 3 3100, like I said, 95 pounds here in the UK. The Ryzen 5 3600, anywhere around the 155 to 170 mark, depending where you shop. So there is quite a big jump. And if it is just gaming you're doing or light tasks, the occasional bit of video editing, as most of us know, if you've used a Intel, uh, the 6700K or 6700, or maybe even the 6400K or 6500K, whichever it is. Those systems were absolutely fine for video editing in their day a couple of years ago. So this is going to do the same sort of thing. It's essentially the same kind of deal. Four thread, uh, four cores rather, eight threads. It's not a slouch, and for under 100 pounds, you do get an awful lot of bang for your buck. I was really tempted to go down the Intel route. But even with Intel route, to get an unlocked processor and an unlocked board with a, a minimal amount of overclocking takes you so much higher in the product stack price-wise that it's just there isn't a comparison. There really isn't. Now, Intel obviously have had their issues this week with data leaks and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, Intel are not doing well at the moment. They really aren't. Uh, anyway. Matthew Day, yes, yeah, sums up my thoughts exactly. Micro ATX looks so lonely in a full ATX case. It totally does. I completely agree with you. And I I can't do it. I can't do it to myself. I genuinely can't. So anyway, let's have a quick look at the, the build I've put together. And you can give me your comments on it. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you dislike. 
all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah, see where I went wrong. Can I just, oh, Ricardo. Caff says I have to say something. Ricardo wants to know if an Aurora's B550 Pro AC is about £215 in his country, cross conversion. Mm. Is it expensive or fair price? Uh, Ricardo's asking about the B550. Um, it equates to around about £200 for the B550 Aorus Elite, was that? Just Aorus Pro. Uh, Aorus Pro, so 200 odd pounds is... AC. A, that does seem a little bit over what we would pay here, I think. I've got to be honest with you, it's not one I've paid that close of attention to. Again, because it's taken... When I get to the 160, 170 mark on B550, or X570 for that matter, I kind of start waning off and losing interest because for me then, it's coming into a different product category altogether. So the fact as well that I bought the, uh, the ASUS X570 Tough more. Gaming. Thanks, Kat. I'm surrounded by pens. There we go. I have, I have many pens. I'll never be caught out for a pen. Uh, it's different product category. The Tough Gaming was, I think I paid 164, 165 or something. So if I have to spend more than that on a B550 board against X570, it just doesn't feel right. I know times have changed and prices have gone up, etc. But saying that, the uh, ASUS X570 Tough Gaming, you can still now pick up for around right about the 170 mark, which is really a fantastic deal. And until we really see, until we really see some uh, really good reviews and VRM tests of the B550 boards. I think that one's still a difficult one to beat, although it is really, really glitchy with memory and all that kind of stuff, as most of you that are in our Discord and the tech support will uh, vouch for. I would say probably a good 60% of problematic motherboards of recent times have been ASUS X570 boards, which is actually quite staggering. Uh, the rest of them have all been a pretty much a mixed bunch various uh, A320s and B450s, etc. But the X570 Tough Gaming does seem to be the one that causes a lot of issues. What are you doing? I don't need more pens. Whoever's telling Kath to do it in a chat, did you stop it? Who'd you guess? I would say it's probably uh, Shadow. Yeah. Yes, I thought it would be. Okay, so enough blathering on. Let's take a look at the uh, the build. If I can find my mouse, there we go. And oh, which one's the screen? I can never remember this. Number three. Hey, boom, there we go. Right, let's get rid of these pens first of all so I can actually put my arm on the desk. So there we go, there is the, uh, the part picker list. Now you can if you want to, if you want to see this on your own screen, if you're on a mobile device or something, you want to see it a little bit bigger or do whatever. In the video description, there is a link to it, so you can go in there and check it out for yourselves. And also you can leave comments and all that kind of stuff if you want to, you're more than welcome to. But there is the product listings. And I'll scroll down to the bottom quickly so you can see the price. So we've just come in with shipping included, just a smidge under 700 pounds. There's a good reason for that because although we've kind of minimized or skimped a little bit on the processor and the motherboard, it, like I said, it's still a pretty potent combination. Also, being a B550, you can have a little bit of wiggle room for upgrades as things go on. So APUs, the 4750s, that kind of stuff. Also, the 4000 series, the desktop chips when they come out, we are pretty much hoping that it's going to work on these boards. I can't see a reason why it wouldn't, and you've got much more chance from working on a B550 or an X570 than you have anything else in the product stack. So you are giving yourself a little bit of future proofing. You've got PCI Express 4, obviously, uh, across some of the lanes, less so than in the X570, but certainly for most people, for maybe an NVMe drive and a graphics card, that is what most people are gonna be concentrating on. So you are having some future proof in. So anyway, processor, we've got the AMD Ryzen 3 3100, 3.6 gigahertz quad-core processor, and it comes with the stock cooler, so we don't need to necessarily change that. It's a race. But that's easy for me to say. It's a Wraith Stealth Cooler, which uh, most of you have seen before. No real surprises there. And basically does the job. This chip isn't likely to get very hot. And I think in the case that we've chosen as well, 
it isn't going to get the chance to get hot because there's going to be a ton of airflow. Anyway, so the Ryzen 3 3100 I think is a pretty decent choice at the moment. Again, around this sort of price point, and you can see some of the pricing around there. DC Sunbase got an extra three quid off voucher at Amazon at the minute. Uh, right, who says that? Kev just said that the TC Sumbo has got an extra voucher off at the moment, so if you want to pick up one of those, you can get it even cheaper. So you might be able to even buy yourself a coffee at the same time. So the Azure B550 Gaming, as we can see, the price on there at the moment is $112.99, that was on Amazon. So again, do take it with a pinch of salt. These prices do fluctuate quite dramatically. And I only bought mine, what, a day ago? Yeah, it got delivered yesterday. So yeah, it's already gone up very, very slightly. But anyway, still for £113, it is a really, really good value for money board, in my opinion. And yeah, basically, you can see what it is, you can see what's going on there. So there's a relatively small, but actually quite a heavyweight VRM cooler. Now, I actually took it off today, off the board, just to have a look and to see what was going on under there. And actually, I was quite surprised to see, they are saying that this board, I think they're saying is a eight phase VRM which kind of, I thought when I saw it, it's like, mm, I don't think eight phases are gonna fit physically underneath that heat sink anyway. So I took it all apart to see what was going on and I was actually surprised to see there are actually six individual phases. Rather than being like they did previously, three phases with a doubler, there were actually six individual lanes of um, control, both with high and low side FETs. And if I remember rightly, it was the SM4337 on the high side and SM4336 on the low side. So not the best VRMs, very much cheap VRMs to be honest with you, by Doge, but certainly there are six power stages, plus you've got an additional two power stages actually on the, uh, for the V-Core, uh, the IO rather. So yeah, it's a six plus two. It's not really an eight phase, it's a six plus two, but that's uh, marketing for you. It always goes that way. In actual fact, if we take a, uh, another look at that, the one thing which I think does let it down, if we go to the Amazon site, hopefully there's gonna be nothing there which is gonna incriminate me. Nope, should be okay. So looking at the board itself, so you can see there's a slightly better picture. You've got a relatively nice heat sink over the, um, the IO bridge at the bottom here. You've got six SATA ports rather than the usual four, which is quite nice to see, although if you do use two of the bottom ones, then you do lose um, your M.2 at the bottom, as is generally the case with a lot of AMD chipsets. Although if you're using X570, obviously that wouldn't be the case. In this slot here, and this one, you've got the PCI Express four time slot, which is uh, shares the lanes, dedicated lane with the CPU, and also you've got your Ultra M.2 there. Your address at the top right. Oh. Okay. I can't see it now. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, the M.2 slot is PCI Express 4, again, which is a direct link with the CPU. All nice and dandy. Now the actual, the IO is what lets it down. The IO on this is pretty, well, crap. <laughs> There's no other way, you can't really sugarcoat it much more than that, but it's functional and it does what it needs to do. So you've got your PS2 ports, which you're never gonna use and you've got your USB 3.2 ports and you've got six of those spread out across the board. So keyboard and mouse in this one more than likely, capture card or something, uh, card reader, and you've still got a couple left over for other things. So printer maybe if you're uh, that way inclined, scanner maybe if you're that way inclined, maybe a headset, but six ports on the back I don't think is um, a deal breaker. You've got the Gigabit LAN, which is the Realtek 8111H, and the audio actually, it looks like it's got crap audio, but it's actually got the Realtek AL1200 chipset on there, which is actually not too bad. Calf's got a question. What everyone wants to know about this board mm -hmm. is... Don't know. RGB support. Does it have RGB support? Ah, uh, look at that bastard spider. What? I'm not even scared of spiders. Where is That's it? the size of a mouse. Shut up. <laughs> Where to? It's under my chair. Oh yeah, I can see it, yeah. If you roll back, you'll have him. Will I? I yeah. don't know where it is. Sorry, but here's a spider. Go forward, Calf. Oh, God. I can't move my feet up. There he is, he's not that bad. 
Right, I need to go ask Spoiler alert, everybody. I'm not scared of spiders. Infested by a huge bastard spider. My phone's gonna fall. <laughs> right, moving on. So, yeah, audio. If you do want to use 7.1 setup on here, you can do. You just have to use the front I.O. ports, which is not ideal, but I think most people these days generally will just use the headphone jack, maybe the mic jack. Probably only use the headphone jack, to be honest with you. Oh, I don't know. Bloody calf's lost the spider. <laughs> it's probably gone under your desk. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Lots of Chinese writing, which I don't understand. And there's the board itself. Actually, I think it looks pretty decent. So again, is your M.2, etc., etc. At the bottom, in this really bottom corner here, you've got two lots of RGB. So you've got a 12 volt RGB this side, you've got your five volt RGB addressable on that side. And also if you go right to the top, you've got exactly the same again. So 12 volt and addressable five volt. So RGB is gonna be no problems at all, whether you've got a top mounted setup or a bottom mounted setup or a combination of the two. Also as well, you've got your multiple connections there for the uh, power delivery. So you've got a four plus four and also a single four. So power delivery isn't going to be an issue. You should be able to get power there. You don't have to use the plus four if you don't want to. You can just use the uh, the eight pin. No worries. But yeah, overall, nice board. And actually, what I quite like is the fact that it's a full width board. So you've got the nine mounting ports there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's also a tenth one there if you want to. So you can... Uh, make sure the board is nice and secure wherever you put it. Quite a few boards recently have only got this kind of half section here missing. So the board tends to flap around when you're trying to plug in any of the uh, power connectors and all that kind of stuff, which is a little bit worrying if you short something out against a motherboard. Anyway, I quite like that. It's pretty decent. So that is the board. Let's go back and see what other random components I've put in. So memory wise, that one is gonna be open for conjecture. Ideally, it would have been better with 3600, but for 60 pounds at the moment, the Team Force Vulcan Z is a pretty decent one, and it is actually on the motherboard compatibility list. So uh, yeah, that is pretty pretty sweet. Uh, again, 60 pounds for 16 gigs of RAM is excellent. We'll get closer and closer to that magical 25 pounds per eight gigs. We might get there, we might not, but again, not too bad. Uh, Storage-wise, we've gone with the Seagate Barracuda. Seagate drives generally, I don't think you can go too far wrong with a good Seagate drive, um, 7200 RPM, for putting on things like your games, your Steam library, all that kind of stuff, is gonna be uh, absolutely brilliant. And really, actually, a brilliant price. That is from PC Raw Business in the UK for 35.97. So a terabyte of storage for slower mechanical stuff is absolutely fine. The main uh, drive, I've gone with an SSD here purely to keep the price down. Obviously, if you want to, and really, you probably should go for an NVMe drive just to take advantage of the PCI Express 4, but you don't necessarily have to. Again, it's entirely down to you. In general use, an SSD, a, a reasonably good one, such as the TC Sunbag with uh, cache on it as well, you're gonna be hard pressed to actually see a difference in real world use over an NVMe, maybe a couple of uh, milliseconds or shaved off startup times, that kind of stuff, and loading times. But realistically, unless you actually run a, ben a benchmark, you're not gonna see the difference. So what we've saved on these two drives, we've managed to splash out a little bit and go for the EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 six gig KO Gaming. So this is a pretty decent card, and it is possibly a little bit overpowered for the system, to be fair, but 270 pounds, is pretty much bang on the money of what this card was supposed to be when it came out. Apparently for two terabyte Seagate HD for not much more. Yeah, that is a good point actually. The When it comes to mechanical storage, for a couple of pounds more, you can pretty much double up and then double up until you get to around about the four terabyte mark. Then things start getting a little bit scary. Again, if you, if you want to have the two terabytes of storage on there for a couple of extra pounds, and you can squeeze it out of your, budge, uh, your uh, budget, then why not? 50 quid for the two. 
yeah, 50 quid roughly for the two terabytes, so an extra 14 pounds is not bad. And this, again, if it's a Seagate Barracuda, Seagate drives for me have always been really good, so I'm quite happy to uh, stick my name on those and say, yeah, go for it. If it was an IBM Death Star, then possibly not so much, but luckily they don't exist anymore. But anyway, going back to the graphics cards, so the EVGA, obviously EVGA cards are very good quality. They've got a very, very good reliability rate. And being NVIDIA, it's likely to have less issues with it. Now, obviously, depending if you're team, uh, team green or team red, you can switch that out if you wanted to for a, uh, probably a 5700, you could squeeze in for that sort of money, I would have thought, if, if you're lucky. Maybe a 5600 XT, Again, depending on what your needs are, what games you're playing. But for me personally, the RTX 2060, again, if we're going back to the possible video editing on this as a bit of a sideline as well as gaming, then the KO has got a little bit of extra muscle for things like Blender and rendering and all those kinds of tasks. So yeah, definitely worth doing as far as that's concerned. Bye, baby. Um, so yeah, pretty decent card. Hopefully you guys uh, agree with me on that and it's not the best card out there, but it's certainly not the worst. And for £270, I don't think you can go too far wrong. Moving down, so we've got the case. Now the case is one I particularly like. I do like the uh, the Game Max case. That is a great case. So you've got two massive 200mm fans on the front, addressable RGB, which will plumb in nicely to this motherboard. So we're gonna have full control over all the RGB and also the PWM for the fans. I use one of these in my uh, daily driver and I am very, very pleased with it. It's a great case, it looks nice and it doesn't cost an absolute fortune. And you get all these fans included in with it. You can go water cooling if you want to, but I haven't felt the need to. At the moment, mine's running with a Noctua uh, NH12 and it runs absolutely lovely, very cool, very quiet. So I would have no qualms or reservations about recommending this case. And in fact, I don't think I've found another case that comes close to it in terms of uh, quality, features, fans, and just general cooling. Generally, generally, I do not think I can see anything better than that currently on the market. So yeah, definitely uh, two thumbs up for the case. Rufix says that cost like 150 UK where she lives. <laughs> right, okay. And last one is the power supply, which again, we have skimmed a little bit here. Due to how much power supplies cost at the moment, I think this is a, a very good compromise. It's a bronze certified power supply, the Ericle integrator. A few of us on the Discord have used these in various builds and have not had any issues with them. And I would certainly rather have a 500 watt bronze rated than maybe a branded white or even uncertified power supply just because it had a cool brand name on it like Corsair or be quiet or what, whatever you decide. Personally, I'd rather go with a slightly lesser known brand, but with a bit of certification on it. And again, it's only 500 watts. Our total system draw, I think was about 300 and something watts. Uh, yeah, estimated wattage is 340. So we're way under the 80% of the total capacity. So we are gonna be in that kind of reasonably sweet spot under load of 80% uh, of the total output. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty decent system overall and one that I would be quite happy to own, use and actually build in. Cases wise, again, like I said, you can choose a 20 pounds case if you wanted to. There's no reason why you shouldn't, but then you're gonna have to start thinking about putting extra fans in, all that kind of stuff. This just is gonna look the real deal. If you bought this system, built it up and someone come to look at it to buy it, they would be very hard pressed to kind of talk you down on price. They, there's not anything in here which they could turn around and say, well, you should have used this or you should have used that. Personally, I think it's a really, really good balanced set of components. Again, it is open to conjecture on the uh, NVMe versus SSD. That could actually make things easier for wiring, etc., etc. But I think overall it's a, it's a pretty decent show. So, yeah, there we go. There is the build, there is the price. Let's discuss. If I can remember which button goes back to the other screen. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Right, let's see what your opinions are in the, uh, in the chat. Hopefully I've not been too slated. 
Okay. Uh, Ugly Bob. Let's go straight in there with Ugly Bob. That's the first one I've seen, which I've noticed. So Ugly Bob says I have the 5600 XT instead of the 2600 KO. Both decent cards, but not disappointed with the XT. But I don't do streaming. Very decent card if you don't want to go NVIDIA. Good point. Good point. Uh, Ugly Bob says that case looked really good. It does. It really does. Uh, Matthew Day says an extra tenor gets a Silicon Power M.2. Only a Gen 3, but s still smashes SATA. Well, actually, that is something we're, we're going to be uh, doing. Actually, part of all this whole setup. Uh, our friends over at Silicon Power have actually sent us a selection of drives. So we've got a one terabyte uh, SSD, traditional SSD, 3D NAND with uh, cache on it. So that's part of their SP series. That is the, I think that's the A60. I can never remember the model numbers of these. Uh, sorry, the A55. So that's the A55 drive. So that's a SATA connection. So realistically, 550 megabytes per second read writes, that kind of thing. But also to compare and to see what is kind of more suitable, depending on your budget, we've also got two of their new NVMe drives. Uh, actually, all of them come with, sorry, the SSDs come with three-year warranty. The NVMe's come with a five-year warranty. We've got two one terabyte drives. One of them is uh, PCI Express Gen 3 times four. And then we've also got their really brand new Silicon Power uh, Gen 4 times four drive. So we're gonna be doing some direct comparisons and seeing what the transfer rates are like. And also if it actually makes sense buying depending on your use case scenarios. So yes, we will be looking into all those things on the PCI Express times four. Uh, there we go. Uh, Ruth Wicks says 850 UK. I'm not sure what that is. That's pretty case, I think. Oh, yeah. Buntu Dread says, I don't like the PSU choice, Mike. Don't buy it. It's from generic. The power supply is one of those kind of slightly debatable subjects you'd rather have you sit well. yeah I to be honest with you if I could have found the CIT one actually uh, available f in the PC part picker list I would have gone for that I could have an added it in manually but I thought for the sake of ease of use and for people to be able to buy the actual bits that we're linking to it might have been easier to do that but yeah the CIT the FX range or the uh, ATV Pro both have been really good power supplies uh, Ugly Bob, get an unbranded PSU for all those dice. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo, is it necessary to have an 8 plus 4? No. That is something that actually came up on the PC Part Picker compatibility list. It did say that your power supply didn't have the plus 4 connector for the CPU, but it wasn't absolutely necessary, as it isn't with most boards. Unless you're into some serious overclocking or you've got a really high-end processor, generally you're not going to need that extra 4 pin connector. Uh, Ricardo also says for RAM and SSD NVMe my choice is crucial. No reason why you shouldn't. It's good, good choices. Uh, Aletta says get an NVMe PCI Express Gen 4 M.2. I'm getting sequential reads of over 5000 megabits and write speeds of 4780 megabits which is incredibly quick. And again, it does come down to what you're using it for. If um, you're doing some work which is particularly data heavy and you need quick access, some massive spreadsheets, if you're in a working environment and every second counts because it's a working day, nine to five, definitely get a really fast drive so you get access to your data pretty much instantaneously. Funny, funny enough, that is why data is such a, a really key thing across the world especially in things like trading and all those kind of mission critical things. Now, a lot of you have probably seen, this is going off topic now, but I'm gonna go on there anyway. Uh, you've all probably seen that uh, Mr. Musk is putting all those satellites in space. What's that, Cav? That was your last comment. How was it? Elon Musk. How was it, Elon Musk? Yeah. Anyway, so Elon Musk is putting satellites into space for providing internet. Now, there's two reasons why he's doing this, and one of which 
is to give the internet to people who generally can't get it in kind of second and third world countries and where it's very difficult to get internet, get like a letter, internet. so she, she should be straight on to that. But another reason is because of the internet. Traders need absolute kind of razor precision timing. A lot of these traders use bots, and as soon as they see any changes in the market, immediately they put in a buy or a sell order. And then there's a small delay between that button being pressed or the trigger going, the signal going across the Atlantic through that massive fiber, uh, massive fiber optic cable or whatever it is that links all these countries together. And there is actually a, a lag between you pressing the button and that being received in another country. So that is why Elon's satellites actually take out a lot of that because in space, basically things can travel quicker in a vacuum. So the signal gets sent up into space, can go pretty much all the way around the world and get to its destination before a traditional speed of light signal would get from A to B and going through the different points. So if you're wondering why Elon Musk is so kind of, why does he want to give internet to the world? He doesn't really, he kind of does, but there is another side of it. And stock trading is people are gonna pay through the nose to be able to get those razor sharp reactions from the internet. It's, there is a little bit of latency, I believe, but the speed is quick. I'm not too sure. It's a very complicated science, but essentially, if you go to their site, SpaceX, you can see how the satellites work and they explain it in great detail. But that is essentially what is there. Uh, CPT White says, Techware Forge M would save you £25 on the case. The Meshify C-Clone comes with 4x120mm fans, 140 uh, pounds on scan. CPT White, I think you sent me an email during the week, and I did actually look at that. I haven't replied to you, I do apologise. I did look at the Techware Forge. We are actually, Techware, we're supposed to be coming into the UK in a bigger way and actually getting a lot more stuff in. They said they were going to send me some review samples. Obviously, COVID, etc. that hasn't quite happened as expected, but yeah, hopefully we'll be taking a look at some of their stuff very soon. The only thing with the Techware Forge, I did look at it, and yes, it is a clone, but it did look a little bit on the cheap side. I need to have another look at it closer, but interesting. Tristan G says, I don't think gamers really need NVMe storage drives. SSD does fine for that. Uh, while cool and fast, the true need is for contingent upon use requirements. For example, video rendering processing. Yeah, there is that to it, definitely. Uh, Ninja47 says, I have a question. I just bought a GTX 970, still good in 2020. Hell, yeah, absolutely fine. The, um, the 970 is still a pretty powerful card and if you're going a little bit lower on your resolutions and your texture settings, it still can keep up with the rest of them. So, uh, Matthew Day says it's on Amazon too. What's that? Oh, the uh, the techware. No, I do need to have a look at that. Oh, right Steve Darby says hi all. Connor keeps asking that one for you. Connor Smith. Uh, Connor Smith, the Deep Cool Matrix 55 with RGB fans costs the same and comes in black and white and is a good choice for a white themed build. Yeah, the Matrix 55, I think the Matrix 33 as well is an option. I think that comes without the fans, but yeah, I actually, that's another thing, the deep cool stuff. I need to take a look at that stuff in a little bit more depth also. Too much stuff, not enough time. Uh, Nathan Gamble says, I, I think that PCI Express 4, 4.0, NVMe support is going to be uh, important in a couple of years once we get more PS5 ports onto the PC. Yeah, definitely potential there. Ninja 47 says, I got the Strix 970. Is that a good one? Yeah. Most Strix cards are really good, although you do pay a little bit of Strix tax, but ASUS tax on them, but still a decent all rounder. Da, da, da. Yeah, so there you go that is the build uh, I'm actually I'm quite excited to see what this is actually capable of and I do have uh, a very good way of kind of well 
putting something against it. So I've got the Intel 6700K system or setup. So I've got the ASUS board and the chip. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to give it a run for its money. It's going to be using a lot less power and a lot less heat. But it would be good to see if the Ryzen 3 3100 can actually give Intel's previous flagship a run for its money in 2020. What was that, Cal? Ugly Bob. Uh, Ugly Bob says, can we get those Mike's unboxing t-shirts? Um, you can. There's, uh, there's a couple of ways you can get one. One of the ways is if, you, uh, if you're if you on a Discord and you buy something off me that is X review, depending on what it is, you'll either get sent a pen or maybe a t-shirt with it, depending uh, on my mood and also what is available at the time. Another way of doing it is you can uh, message us directly or alternatively, you can join our Patreon. So Patreon backers, if you join us at the $10 level, then after your first billing cycle, we'll then contact you and say what size t-shirt you want. But if you do want one in a hurry and uh, you need it very, very quick, then yeah, drop us a line either on the email, which is uh, email address at the bottom there, or uh, PM us on Discord if you're in it. Sorry, Kath, what was that? Yeah, and also depends as well if you join us on the, I think it's the $5 one, you get a pen. <laughs> Quite an expensive pen if you think about it, but if you're doing it just to uh, give us a little bit of uh, encouragement and to help the channel, then it's a freebie, essentially. So, yeah, there we go. Steve Darby says, are you having a pen giveaway? Um, I hadn't planned on it. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Am I allowed to, Kath? It's hard to get addresses. And yeah, go. getting the addresses and making sure you're the right person is always difficult in the live chat. That's why we tend to do it on Facebook. Uh, purely because we keep track of them. I'll have to think of a question to, for the giveaway. It's still hard to get there yeah. to addresses. Yeah. We've yeah. Had people we need to work properly, out a way of doing that. We've had people, haven't we, properly clone people's accounts to get things. CPT White says, no card is anywhere close to saturating the bandwidth of PCI E Gen 3. It's a non-issue, Connor. Uh, yep, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> Ugly Bob says, I'm on a lord over those guys I work with who are sporting Gamers Nexus t-shirts. Long-haired nerds. Skystalker says, we love the pens. Awesome. Steve Darby says, I'm in Swindon, so not far. That is pretty good. Um, oh, I was, I was thinking about this earlier, or was it yesterday? I can't remember. They all roll into one these days. And I had a really good question, which I thought, if real techie nerds would know the answer to this, but I can't remember it now, so <laughs> I can't even ask the question. I am an idiot. Captain Misa Ventures, like and share. That's a very, very good idea. Uh, Gulag Spectator says, should I get the Ryzen 3 3100 or the Ryzen 5 3600 for a seven to 800 pound build? I do not plan to stream. Um, that's always a difficult one. If you're just playing, if you're just gaming, then there isn't really at the moment any real necessity to go for anything more than this. You could do. Um, the Ryzen 5 3600 is essentially very similar spec-wise, as in frequencies, boost speeds, maybe about 100 megahertz, maybe 200 megahertz quicker on all six cores. Games are gonna start becoming more and more threaded. We can see that from the PlayStation 5, also from the Xbox coming out. The way that those games are gonna be coded are gonna take advantage of AMD systems. So. AMD has gone really heavy on multi-threading and uh, multi-core, so I would be amazed if that didn't follow suit in the PC market. Although, having said that, that has been the case for the uh, previous generations, and we still haven't quite seen it yet. It does also depend what you're good at doing game-wise, and also what's running in the background. If you've got maybe a multi-monitor setup, and you've got maybe Discord on one, you've got multiple tabs open on another, you've got your antivirus scanning, God knows what else in the background, then having extra threads is definitely noticeable. I've found it on a few tests now where I've done things and I've got stuff running in the background 
And yeah, everyone says, well, this game needs only needs dual core, or this game only needs quad core. But what you have to take into consideration is what the rest of the system is doing. If you've shut down everything else, so you've got your, your kind of your Steam shut down, you play shut down. Um, what else have we got? There's all sorts. The AMD stuff shut down, your antivirus shut down. If you shut down all the apps in the background, then yeah, you don't need more than four, th four cores, eight threads. That's absolutely fine. But it's when you have got those things running in the background, they all take up resources, they all will take up thread process priority. So if you want that smoother gaming experience, then definitely more cores the merrier. But again, it depends on your budget and what you feel comfortable with. I would say if you're building a PC closer to the £800 mark, I would definitely stump up the cash and go for a Ryzen 5 3600. That is, without a doubt, the sweet spot in the AMD product stack at the moment. And I don't think you'd ever get to the point where you say, I regret buying that chip. You may think, well, I don't need that chip, but I don't think you'd regret actually buying it for what it is. So, yeah. Take it as it is. If you've got the money, definitely spend the extra £50 and get the... Uh, the Ryzen 5 3600. Jack, Jack Jones says cheap B4, B550 motherboard or high-end B450? <sighs> that is a, a very, very, very debatable question. So a high-end B450 board. So when you say high-end B450, realistically you're looking MSI Tomahawk and uh, MSI AC Carbon possibly some of the gigabyte boards, mm, probably less so. The MSI ones generally tend to be the more favorable boards VRM-wise and actually, if you're looking at spec-wise, again, that's difficult. I suppose the, the AC Carbon from MSI is probably the best B450 board that I can personally think of. So to take that, which is at the moment around about 130, 140 pounds, if you get the max version, which is gonna be compatible with the newer chips, £140 in the B550 range is in a reasonably good position. So you could probably get the B550 Pro-A from MSI when it comes out in about, what's the date today? The 8th. So in eight days time, 16th of August, Same allegedly, those boards will be released more to the mainstream. And also it depends if you're going micro ATX or whether you're going full ATX. If you're going micro ATX, then you can drop the prices by about 20, 30 pounds per board. And there's a super chat. And Ricardo has sent us in um, 20,000 COPs. I'm not too sure what that exactly is, but I do thank you very much. So what is a COP? Someone tell me in the chat, please, because I don't want to look like a complete idiot for the rest of the evening. <laughs> thank you, Ricardo. Ricardo's been around in our channel for a long time. and Thank you very much, we do appreciate that. As you're probably wondering what the hell's going on, when we get a super chat come in, the RGB goes off just so that I know it's actually happened. Awesome job. Thank you, Ricardo. We do appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's like a doctor disrespect kind of uh, payment, isn't it? So yeah, the going back to the B, a, a good B450 board is probably not going to be as good as a low end B550 board. Purely because, X570? yeah, so X570 is going to be, in general, is going to be better. B550 boards seem to have learned the lesson from the X570s and the B5, uh, B450s in regards to the VRM. So what they've done is most of the v boards now have more VRMs. So they basically split the power delivery up into multiple channels. Rather than being either three or four phases, most of the boards now, even at the entry level or the kind of lower mid range, generally tend to be uh, five, six or more phases. Now, if you look back at the X570 range, when they came out, a lot of the boards which were actually rated as being very good for VRMs in the X570 range were of a similar nature, five phases, six phases. In actual fact, I can, uh, I can get that up on the screen and actually validate that because that is something I did look at earlier as well, because I was kind of wondering the same. It is a very close line, it really is, and unfortunately I don't have any B550 information on this particular chart at the moment, but we can see some of the information about the X570s. So if I go over to, the, which one is it, Windows Desktop. 
So this is a, a document, which is docs.google.com, spreadsheet, blah, 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 blah. So this is basically the VRM ratings for X570, etc. So if you look at the, uh, well, the ASRock, the X570 Aqua, which is uh, an amazing board, that has six phases, so six plus two, which is essentially the same as what the Phantom Gaming 4 B550's got. The X570 Phantom Gaming 4, again, that only had four phases. Now, the, the splitters and the doublers do kind of make a difference. So actually, that's, that's a really good example. So this one here, the uh, X570 Phantom Gaming 4, on the X570 was four phases, plus two. So four for your V-Core, two for the uh, IO, or the, uh, I, whatever it is, the other one, I forget. But basically that's using a doubler as well. So that's using the SM4337 on the high side and low side we're using SM4336. Now the B550 board I've just bought for 120 pounds, give or take a few pence, whatever you're looking at, has got exactly the same layout, but without using a doubler and has got six phases, six plus two. So that takes it up into this territory, the Creator, the Aqua, uh, Phantom Gaming X, game, 50 amp power stages, this board's got that as well. A lot of the other X570 boards here, four phases, four plus two, etc., etc., using doublers. And if you go to the ASUS boards, again, four phases, four phases, six phases on the, the ACE, which was a really expensive board. The Crosshair Formula, seven phases. That is 60 amp power stages, which makes it a bit better again. But you get where I'm coming at with this. These are really high-end boards. If we look down to the previous generation, the B450s, these are all using four phases, three phases, similar setup with the FET. So we've got SM4337s and SM4336s, but we've only got three of them. The new version of this board, the B450, uh, B550 Pro 4, it's got six phases. So it's got double the amount of phases. Now you see that board was absolutely useless for overclocking a 3950X. For 3900, needed a little bit of extra cooling, but for the rest of the product stacks, absolutely fine. So th these are the things you need to be looking at. Now I'll put a link for this actually in the uh, the chat, because this, I think for a lot of people, this is really, really important. That you, you really do need to take a look at these things and know what it's all about. And let's go back to the, which one was it? That one there. Oh no, I pressed the wrong button, I'm stupid. There we go, <laughs> it did work, hey, RGB, woohoo! That is another super chat, now who's that coming from? That's come from Sky Stalker, who has given us 10 Canadian pesos. <laughs> uh, Sky Stalker says, thanks for all you do guys. That's me and Kath, she is not a guy, but she, She's not a guy, she's got lady things. Um, yeah, this is 5.73 quid. I know the money thing is weird. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me paste in the, um, there's the link for the document I was just looking at. But you just see what I mean, just see what I'm saying. So a lot of people were kind of like, well, B550 is the mid range. Essentially it isn't. The B550 is, a cent in my opinion, is a very slightly cut down version of the X570 boards, which do command that extra price tag. And again, for 110, 120 pounds, whatever the case may be, something like this board with six power phases, well, six plus two power phases, yes, it might be slightly limited on IO, and it may not have a, uh, a captive IO shield, and it may not have RGB all over the board, but potentially you can still hook up RGB, addressable RGB, and still run really high end processors with very, very little fuss, despite the fact that it's not covered in heat sinks everywhere. Because you've got those splitters, or sorry, the the, um, the MOSFETs split into various phases, that reduces some of the need for all that cooling. So with this board, I think it should probably handle up to 3900 quite easily. 3950 in an overclock, maybe it might start struggling, like a lot of the other boards with similar VRM setups might. Um, Personally, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing some of the videos from Hardware Unboxed and uh, similar to see what they actually make of these boards because I think they're going to do really well and I'll be surprised if, they, uh, if they're if they negative in any way about it. I can't see any reason why they would. 
for the actual B550, they might say, well, it hasn't got quite as many phases as some of the higher end boards, which have got 10 or 12 phases. But I think for most people in that really, that comfort zone of the mid-range, I think boards like this are going to be brilliant. Um, ASRock, the gaming, uh, Phantom Gaming 4, the Steel Legend, the, what's the other one? Pro 4. Yeah, Pro 4, Steel Legend, and the Phantom Gaming are all in that similar sort of boat where they're very similar layout and very similar technology in them. I think it's going to be really good. I'm looking forward to using it. I really am. Calf says I have to do a thing. Uh, Danielle, Danielle, Danielle. I can't see Danielle. How far up is it? Oh, Danielle Emberley. Okay. Trying to understand how most people run AMD computers. No overclocking, manual OC using XMP. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much me. <laughs> I, uh, I like to be able to just use the PC. And um, for most people, I think with, especially the, like, the 3000 series chips, most of them, if you put them in precision boost overclock mode, which is pretty much default anyway, enable XMP in your memory, you're pretty much there. There's not really much more you can do. The systems have become so good that they just look after themselves. You can go into Ryzen Master and tweak things a little bit, but generally all it does is just adds a few more degrees of temperature, which at the moment <laughs> is too hot, damn hot. Anyway, why would you want to add a few more extra degrees to your PC? It's just pretty insane. But anyway. Um, CPT White says, actually hardcore overclocking is who you need to look up if you want info on motherboard VRMs. That is true. Although actually hardcore overclocking and to some extent Steve from Gamers Nexus I think they get too into it and they get too fussy about stuff so they do go very very in depth but I think they they're can. yeah a they can because they've got the hardware to do it but I don't think they really cater towards the kind of the Average. normal people overclockers and people buying really high-end stuff yeah Fury boots fantastic information but for most normal people all you want to know is is my processor going to catch on fire is it going to be stable? Is it going to crash? Can I play my games? You're not particularly worried whether or not it's got six phases or eight phases or 12 phases or whether it's got an ambient delta of X over Z or whatever it is. People don't care. They just want to use a PC, play games, have fun, and not have to spend all their lives on the internet, going onto Google and searching in, why is my PC crashing? That's the last thing you want. Although for me, it's pretty good because I make videos of that. So. Actually, yeah. Let's do more overclocking. Let's get PCs crashing. Gets me more views. Uh, Steve Darby says the Aorus Elite has doublers and makes six times two equals twelve phases. Okay, there you go. You found that spider yet? No. Damn you, woman. Got my catching kit though. Uh, the freckle. The Freckle Puny says, was holding out for a Ryzen 3 30, uh, 3300X. It's paired with my ASRock B550M Pro 4. Still not in stock here in the UK. Went with an R5 3600 instead. To be honest with you, I think the 3500, uh, when you're looking at the 3300X versus the 3600, especially price-wise at the moment, if they were at their original prices, I think it'd be fine. But I think it's like 20 or 30 pounds difference between the 3300X, if you could get it. And the 3600, I think that's money well spent. A rally SLP says, hey all, I'm late. We'll let you off just this once. Uh, what else we got? Dave Burns says, robbed of the RGB sky. There was, you did get a little bit of RGB for your money. Uh, so, uh, 42086 Gaming says, I built my first PC, a Ryzen 5 600 AF, ASRock B450 Pro 4 motherboard, and an MSI 1660 Super Gaming X with 16 gigs of G-Scale Flare X and a 500 gig Crucial M.2 NVMe, all in a Rosewell Prism S case. That sounds like an awesome build. That's a great little setup. Oh. 
I missed a bit there. Aletta said something about the uh, the MSI X570 Unify has six phases. It's a great MOBO for only three hundred dollars. Just, just the three hundred dollars. Uh, Tristan G says, "Lady things, Mike." Yes, Calf has lady things. Well said. <laughs> uh, lady things like a bag glove and bonnet. Couldn't find a bonnet. Yeah, no bonnets. Or bag and gloves though, and a mask. Oh, I haven't got a mask. I bag and Mark bag. Fox says those new Ryzen 3 3600X are still on back order here in the USA. Good power supplies are hard uh, to find. Seasonic and such, yeah, definitely. It's it's pretty uh, it's pretty sketchy out there at the moment. It doesn't look like it's getting any better anytime soon. Uh, Steve Darby says, I have the Aurorus Elite X570. Very pleased so far. Awesome. <laughs> and let us put some emojis in there. Um, a bag, some gloves and a bonnet. Amazing. No, it's not. I did the... I couldn't find a bonnet, so I did a crane, and then I let us take yeah. the crane out and put a gun. That's not a gun. That's a gun. It's a bonnet. Oh, no, it's a super soaker. It's a gun. Yeah, super soaker gun. CPT White says, it's best to undervolt Ryzen. Do you know what? I actually tried undervolting mine today, just, just for shits and giggles. I thought, I'll just go into the BIOS and I'll just undervolt it by half a volt. Yeah, I didn't like it very much. Didn't boot. Uh... Ubuntu Dread says, supposed to be a big shipment of Ryzen landing in the UK next week. 1600 AFs, 3300X uh, are still new, are still low volume in the container, as far as I know. That'll be interesting to see. Now, actually, one of the other things in this parts setup that um, I listed, the EVGA, the RTX 2060 KO, I have actually bought that as well. That is showing up tomorrow. So I am actually going to be putting together pretty much most of this stuff as per the uh, the build guide. So we're going to go through, build it all up, see how it goes, uh, and see what the results are like. I think it's going to be pretty decent. I'm looking forward to the KO. Uh, Tristan G says, oh no, hang on. Uh, CPT White says, do you know, don't know if you know, follow Optimum Tech. If not, give him a watch. He's the best SFF channel on YouTube. Also does great thermal testing. I did see that actually, Optimum Tech, when he did the review of the uh, the ASRO A310, was it A300? So I was looking at getting one of those myself. Tristan G says, bit of a nerd is fine in my opinion when you get into computers. The fact is many enjoy the tweaking but certainly aren't as hardcore as the things featured on some YouTube channels, as you mentioned, Mike. Yeah, it, it, if I had the time and the money and the resources, I probably would look at overclocking and seeing what is possible. But I don't have any of those, so, <laughs> yet, yet, anyway. Uh, Dissolve Braces says, oh sorry, Dissolve Girl, <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah, I see it. Hi to both of you. Have you looked into GPU braces, like the RGB ones, cheap and cheerful things? I haven't. And actually, I, I've been sent a case for a review today, which had the weirdest GPU anti-sag brace that I've ever seen. And I don't understand it. But you'll probably be seeing that in the review coming up soon. AK Liam says, hey, Mike. How you doing, Liam? Uh, Ghost Diner says, how is it still so hot at quarter past 10? I don't know. It's insanely hot. Raleigh says, let's hope the build is a knockout. Although you've put cock out, so. <laughs> it is hot, but I don't think it's cock out weather. <laughs> Gary says, uh, how about a live stream build? I might actually do it for that one. I, I could do that, it's tempting. So, uh, 42086 Gaming says, a lot of your YouTube videos help me make a lot of choices, so thank you for your help. You're welcome. Uh, Clinton Davis says, what is with the 1200AF? Is it similar in speed to the Ryzen 3200G? I'm not entirely sure. The 1200AF I've not seen much on, I've got to be honest, so I don't know the answer to that. I would say probably yeah, It may, that would make a lot of sense. 
Uh, Ricardo says, uh, if it's true, RTX 3000 series will have new con new connector, will force us to buy brand new PSUs. Don't think that's the case. I think that one's already been debunked. Uh, Shinkaj or Shinukaj or I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. Uh, don't mess with Ryzen. Just install it on that B550 with 3600 speed RAM and enjoy your PC. Sounds good. Uh, Sky Stalker says I just purchased the ASRock B550 Gaming using Mike's uh, affiliate link. Thank you, Sky. Appreciate that. It is That's a great. Okay. It is a great deal, even in Canada. 160 Canadian dollars. So that is roughly. That's about eighty pound. No, yeah, that's about eight, bleh, brain. That's about ninety pounds, isn't it? That's pretty decent. You no longer have a Google in there. So. Yeah, we got rid of the Google Home from in this room, so we can't even ask Google anymore. They can't listen in as easy. Uh, Trooper C says just tidying my PC cable uh, while watching the stream, and I regret RGB. Yes, I feel your pain. I really do. CPT White or Captain White says, uh, yes, just like to say thank you for your case reviews, Mike. They've been very useful in my builds. Oh, awesome. Uh, I agree with Aletta on that. So Mark Fox has mentioned about the chipset fans and X570. I don't think I've ever heard of a fan on mine. I think the worst one was probably one of the um, Biostar boards, which looked like it had one of those really old fashioned almost like a CPU cooler from the early NVIDIA TNT days. Quite a noisy little beast, but I haven't heard it in real life, so I could be completely wrong. Uh, Kuritsu says, my chipset fan got pretty loud, possibly or probably because of the card blocking it. Yeah, that is always a thing. Like, Why would you put a chipset fan directly where a GPU is gonna sit? Because obviously, whenever you get a fan and you put something in front of it, you get turbulence and resistance and the fan speeds up a bit to combat it. It's always a bad idea. ClickTech Kev says, um, looking forward to seeing the build come together. Yeah, you and me both. Skystalker says 96 quid in Canada for the ASRock board. That's bloody good. Clinton Davis says, I just want to say thank you for the video the other day in regards to Snappy Driver Installer. Uh, it is like Lenovo System Update for the masses, it really is useful. And actually, yeah, if you haven't tried or used that recently, um, yeah, Snappy Driver Installer. Now make sure you go to the right link because there's been loads and loads of clones of the site that produce malware and all kinds of crap. So you don't want to do it, but it's snappy-driver-installer.org. Caf's gonna put a link in the description. So if you haven't tried it, give it a go, especially if you're getting errors, uh, code 43s, you're getting random shutdowns. Uh, what was the one I saw the other day? Code 143 or something. The one where your system just randomly shuts down completely. That normally tends to be from a driver related issue. So definitely worth checking that out. Uh, Nathan Gamble says, Mike's and Boxing Reviews, are we able to post links? There's a document that lists the details of almost all AM4 motherboards, VRMs and ports that I think would be useful to people here. Um, yeah, what you could do is, if you post it onto our Discord, if you're not a member already, or, or just put it on an email, mikeatmarksandboxing.com, it is just there. Send it across and then we'll add it so everyone can see it. Uh, Tristan G says, am I correct in discovering that the 2000 series Ryzen, i.e. the 2600X CPUs, are not or aren't compatible with the B550 motherboard? You are absolutely correct. Um, yes, I've looked at the BIOS of this today and the BIOS covers basically about 12 processors, 13 processors, all of which are Ryzen 3000 parts, not APUs, only CPUs. So uh, Ryzen 3 3100, 3300X, 3600, 3600, uh, sorry, 3700, 3700X, T, 
yeah, basically those range of chips. That is all that is supported on these boards. Although I'm desperately, desperately wanting to put a, uh, a Ryzen 7 1700 on there and see if it will actually do anything. There have been people that have said that it is possible and it will happen. The X570 did the same thing. They technically weren't compatible with the 1000 series chips. You could put them on there and it would work absolutely fine. I did it with my uh, Asus Tough Gaming. I put the Ryzen 1700 on there. Worked absolutely fine. So maybe we'll do that in a live stream, finding what chips actually work on this board and which ones don't and see if I can set fire to it. Uh, Connor Smith says, how much do you reckon RTX 2000 cards will decrease in price when 3000 cards release? Is it worth the wait or buy a 2000 series card? Personally, I don't think there's going to be a massive decrease, if any. There's still plenty of people who want to buy them. Nvidia cards are pretty much 70% of all GPU sales at the moment. Nvidia don't have a reason really to reduce the price. There's no competition from AMD on the higher level, mid-range possibly, if there's any, if AMD makes some cuts, Nvidia will follow suit, but they're in prime position, they don't need to do it. So I can't see there being any reductions, if any. And because of COVID and availability, etc., I think prices will remain pretty static. I've, as I said just now, I've just bought a, a RTX 2060 KO, should be arriving tomorrow. So yeah, I paid pretty much what is the M MSRP recommended, whatever it is. The basically the price it was meant to be so 270 pounds in the uk which i think it was about 270 dollars when it came out in america normally we pay the same in dollars as pounds so yeah it's a weird thing but yeah that's coming out so i don't think it's going to make a difference uh cpt white says uh da -da -da -da. It's about some compatibility for cases, okay. Uh, Tristan G says, so I need a 3000 series GPU to upgrade my wife's system. Uh, yeah, quite possibly. Well, maybe not, we'll see. Hopefully in a day or two, I'll have the, uh, the confirmation whether or not it works or not. I'm surprised nobody else has tried it yet. Surely someone on the internet somewhere has tried an old processor in one of these boards. There must be. But I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. So Dave Burns has opened up that link, uh, the spreadsheet. So maybe I'll take a look at that a little bit later. It might be a useful one to add to the arsenal. And um, if it is good, we'll post it in our Discord in the technical support section. So for reference purposes, there's tons of the reference purposes over there. So yeah, join the Discord. It's good fun. Sometimes. Uh, Kuritsu's said went for the phantom gaming x nice cbt boy is there anyone you can recommend who looks at broken gpus mike um the last time i looked at a broken gpu i ended up putting it in the oven and it didn't work out so no <laughs> i can't think of anyone sorry uh jack jones says when are the 4000 series chips coming i would say if i had to put a a bet on it i would say october october seems likely possibly who knows where it's a weird world we live in at the moment okie dokie right i think that pretty much is going to wrap things up for tonight um i can't think there's anything else that i needed to say apart from yeah so we'll be doing a, a build with this particular setup and also we'll be testing out some of the foibles of the b550 see if we can get some Series 2000 chips and Series 1000 chips to work. Also, again, we're going to be doing the silicon power testing with the various NVMEs. We probably will end up doing that on this board and also changing out the processor for something faster just to see what data rates we can get out. But yeah, other than that, I think that pretty much wraps things up. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And maybe if you're not subscribed already, consider clicking on the subscribe button and the chime icon. Uh, if you want to join us in our chat and talk about more of this stuff, you can do in the Discord links, which uh, possibly are in the chat somewhere already. If not, they'll be in the video description. I, put it in um, I think that is pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, you've all been awesome. Thanks, everyone, for the super chats. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you do want to have a little bit more interaction with the Mike's Unboxing team and family, you can join us on our Discord. And also, we do uh, get involved with 
uh, Akia Shadow. You can look up on Twitch, just look for Shadow or Akia Shadow. And hopefully, he'll be doing a live stream later where we play some stupid games online and basically act like fools, but it's super fun. So if you want to get involved with that, uh, drop over in the Discord and all the information will be there. But in the meantime... Put a link in here if he wants. Oh yeah, Akia might even put a link in there. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. So yeah, thank you all very much. You've all been amazing. I've been slightly on par, I think, tonight. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourselves. Um, yeah, that is pretty much it. I can't think of anything else to say, so we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.